Joining us for the next hour, Representative David Maloney, Republican from Berks County, and Senator Mario Scavello, Republican from Monroe County. What do people in your district have to say about paying their property tax, Senator? Wow. Uh, you know, 83, 84 percent of the folks that voted for that referendum question in my district, it is one of the strongest uh, support of any other uh, county. We in our, in our county have really been struggling for many, many years because of underfunding from the state from, because of a 1991 law that I'll get into maybe a little bit later on. It's the Hold Harmless Law. All the growth areas, and I believe Representative Maloney's district as well, the same thing. All the growth areas for 12 years were funded off of a 1990 census without a growth supplement. And so for those years and all of the others that have lost population or stayed the same got about the same amount of money for those years. And so, you know, it is a major, major issue in my area and uh, folks are really losing their homes over it and we need to do something about it. Representative, summarize the referendum that the senator just alluded to. Okay, so uh, glad to be here. Thank you so much, Senator Scavella. It's always a pleasure. Uh, we served in the House together, so uh, good to see him. Um, so on November uh, 6th, um, we had a, uh, or 7th rather, we had a uh, referendum on the ballot. That was something that was near and dear to me since the day, pretty much the day I came in. And uh, as Mario served in the House with me, he can, uh, he can witness uh, or has witnessed the conversations that we had that we wanted to be able to take the homestead farmstead exclusion from 50% of the median assessed value to 100% of assessed value. So that was basically the question that was on the ballot. And what were the results uh, of, that, of that referendum? Well, the results of that referendum were, were pretty significant. I know we have, at some point in time, I believe you're going to have a map up. It doesn't have to be now, but I will at least put one up so that you can see that this map pretty much explains how much the interest is statewide. Now, the green is uh, the part of the state that voted yes, and anybody can see at a glance that it's just surprising to see that all that green represents only 54% of Pennsylvania. That's correct. And it also is... And that's um, due to population. That yeah. is due to population. It's also important to know that many of even the reds were very close. And so mm -hmm. we have, I know, one specific county that I believe was 29 votes from going green. So we do have a very close 48 percent in some counties, you know, 49, 47. And, and, and those, are, those are counts that were very close to going green. You know, if I may interject what I, my comment earlier about uh, areas of the state that lost population uh, that were getting funded, you know, at, at the 1990 census, or if you'll find that there are many of those areas that are in the red. So they were overfunded yes. for a period of time. Yeah. And so they, they're happy with, with yeah. what's going on. And know? pretty significantly, if I could add to that, too, that the fact that Many times we hear and still hear from, uh, from colleagues that the northern tier didn't really have a problem. Mm -hmm. But ironically, the voters said something different. Mm -hmm. So just tell me one more time in layman's terms, when the voters voted yes for that referendum, just what did they accomplish? What are they getting? Okay. So what they're getting is more responsibility for the legislature to follow up with enabling legislation that will allow us to fund the homestead farmstead to 100 percent and that of, of assessed value instead of 50 percent of the median assessed value mm -hmm. and how do the school districts figure into this well you know the school districts are going to get refunded per homestead so whatever the taxes are on that homestead the school districts aren't losing any money at all they're sure. getting exactly what they were collecting off the homestead bill mm -hmm. in one check for all the homesteads right. from the state. And I think it's important, if I could, just to, you know, just to say the word that really explains that is in lieu of. Yeah, so instead of, of using the property tax piece, we would get monies in lieu of. So that's how it would be happen. Uh, welcome to the PCN call-in program. I'm Larry Casper. The subject today is property tax. Our toll-free number is 1-877-PA-65001, 
or reach out to us on Twitter at PCNTV. Let's go back in time just a little bit, gentlemen, and, and review the history of the debate of property tax in Pennsylvania. Just how long has this debate been going on? It's been going on since I had hair on my head, I believe, because if you look back in the, in the late 80s, early 90s, they were looking at sales taxes and all different, all different uh, ish, uh, things together, but the state's so diverse and it was so difficult to come to an agreement. Everybody's got an idea about what to do. Use personal income tax, use sales tax, and the others do nothing at all because they find the way things are. So it's not something that's new. But back in 2002, when I was elected to the House of Representatives, I brought a plan to the state. It was a 4% sales tax, lowering the rate, expanding the base on all of the other items, and uh, taxing more items, of course. And dollar for dollar would have eliminated school tax on all properties. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as you work that plan through the, through the um, system there, you find that some folks don't want to tax this item, don't want to tax this item. So as you take the items out, you have to raise the rate. So it went to 5%. Then it went to 6 and finally 7 And then it, they decided to put some personal income tax into it. But as far as uh, the first 4% plan, when it came to the floor, it had about 86 votes back in 04, 05. And from that point on, every time it was introduced after that, it had less votes. Then it became uh, the 76 plan, but it was the same, basically, the, uh, the grandson of the, of, the, of the original plan. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are now with the 76. And 76, what it does is it raises the sales tax, taxes more items, and the personal income tax, I believe, is 4.95 or so. Mm -hmm. um, we tried moving it in the Senate. We had uh, 24 votes, 24 against. Um, and we had um, uh, the lieutenant governor break in the tie against. Uh, since then, we've had about four members or five members of, have said no, that they will not support it the next time around. I've been got a tremendous amount of pressure from uh, different groups within their, their senatorial districts. So the next step was, and I give uh, Representative Maloney all the credit, uh, matter of fact, we were moving it in the House while we were there together, but the Senate never took it up. So two years ago, I said, where's the constitutional question? Why aren't we running it? So the leaders decided to do a poll first. They polled it to see how it would go. 75% of the people voted that they wanted the opportunity to vote for this constitutional mm -hmm. question. Yeah. So it was tremendous. So then, so then we moved it fairly quickly, and uh, here we are. And uh, I'm really happy to see that it passed as well as it did by county. And I dare the members to vote against something that their voters want. Right. Right. Uh, let's take a minute, uh, before we take our first phone call, to just look at property taxes 101. In other words, let's try to consider, in a simple way, just how property taxes are calculated. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you this. I, I was a former school director, and I appreciate all the uh, history that Senator Scavella put into this problem, because it is by far the number one issue in my district. And, and when I can show you numbers of how far Berks County um, went to make sure that they voted for this. But Mario has already mentioned we have a hold harmless situation that has complicated the issue when it comes to how much money a school district gets. We have a funding formula. The Funding Formula Commission, I believe, Senator, just came out with something that many disagree with. I do. Yeah. And, and so we're not getting the appropriate dollars per student into these districts that really desperately need the money. And we have low tax bases. And so when you take tax bases and hold harmless and underfunding, you complicate this money issue for many, many counties besides school districts. And with 500 school districts, it's, it's a big challenge. And so those are some of the challenges that we have um, with why there's such an irregularity and why there's such an imbalance of the monies. Let's start taking some phone calls. Gentlemen, this one is from uh, Christiana, and it's John. Go ahead. John, you're on. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. My uh, complaint is that uh, this country was founded on uh, the idea that we would have representatives representing the will of the people and how to run the country. And I wish that fellow who had made that statement that taxation without representation could come back and see it with representation. It, 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 it's almost as bad, if not worse. 
Well, I, I, I agree with him. Um, you know, one, someone should never be taxed out of their home, and, and, and that's what we, we're actually doing here. I can tell a, a quick story of someone that wrote me a letter. She was 88 years old at the time. Her and her husband retired in 1980. And I received the letter in, in uh, 20, uh, 2004, because when I first started with the 4% plan, and she said, when I retired with my husband, who we were debt-free, our property taxes were about $450. I lost my husband six years earlier, and she took a $6,500 hit on her income. And her school taxes at that time, in 04 were 4500 She says, at age 88, I'm making difficult choices between food, uh, medicine, or paying my taxes. So what did she do? She ate less. She cut her pills to pay her taxes. Is that what we, you know, she says, I'm guilty of living too long. It almost wants to make you cry that that's exactly what's happening. And if we don't correct this, a lot of seniors out there are feeling this right now. And John, I, I would say that I believe the representation statement that you made is indicative of why I believe this map is so important. So I believe what you're saying is that you're afraid that representation that you may think you're getting, you're not getting, because this map is pretty indicative of what the people really want. And so the counties that are green and those folks that have made it very clear that they want this changed, you may or may not, if I'm hearing you right, think that you're getting the right representation. Contact your legislators. All right, gentlemen, uh, let's take another call. This one is from uh, Berks County, and it's Terry. Go ahead. Hello, uh, Representative Maloney and Senator Scabello. Uh, Hi, I've met you both personally during our effort to get SBHB 76 passed. I've been involved with the project for 10 years. Basically, I'm at the point now that I had purchased some property recently in Monroe County. I'm hoping to build up there, but I would be a full to put one two-by-four in place until the property taxes are eliminated. Are we going to make it this year? Are you guys going to get it across the line? I Speaking for myself, Terry, I'm, I'm, I want to see it across the line, and I'm going to do everything I can, and I believe Representative Maloney as well. Uh, we have um, a few different options out there, and what we did is we didn't leave 76 short. And this is in the Senate. Uh, Senator Argel is uh, doing a poll on what the members would vote for. 76 was number one as far as on the, on the list. Number two was just using uh, an increase of personal income tax and, and only on the owner-occupied residential where 76 took it off of all property. And number three was also on the homestead only, uh, homestead farmstead, and using a lower PIT, personal income tax, and a 1% sales tax. And I could expand on that, Terry. I appreciate your call. I think I know who you are, and uh, I really appreciate your passion. Um, as many people have made this very clear. As uh, Senator Scavella mentioned, there's actually four plans that, as of even today, that I was in a discussion over. And, and these are fresh um, IFO numbers. And so we have the 76 plan, which I believe a lot of us, uh, and certainly myself, would favor. And that almost $12 billion is, is what's necessary to replace the total elimination. And we can get into that. The PIT rate would be um, 4.95 instead of 307, and we would go to a 7% um, sales tax and expand it. Plan two would be $7.3 billion because this would be strictly on the homestead farmstead, and that would take the PIT to 4.67% with um, mm. no expanded uh, tax base. You can have a, a homestead-only expansion with 7% reaching the $7.3 billion at 3.3% with the approximate PIT. And then there's a hybrid, which would be no expansion whatsoever, and your PIT rate would be 4.3%. So as of even this afternoon, with some of the freshened up numbers, the discussions that I have, and have had many times with Representative Cox, who's also from Berks County, these are fresh numbers and plans of option if the 76 plan wouldn't work. And, um, and so that's what we're hoping to get to the floor and to your point over the finish line. Which of these plans do you favor? I favor by far uh, House bill and or Senate bill 76. 
And we all do. Uh, it's just a matter of getting 102 votes in the House and 26 in the Senate, mm -hmm. which is not there right now. And I, so I say is let's do something. Mm -hmm. And you can always have that 76 out there that it's, it's, it let's, if we did something and it worked, maybe then we can increase and bring others in. By the way, in the Senate, there were only three plans that we looked at. Okay. So, so there, you have four in the House, but there are three in the Senate. Right. All right, here's a phone call from Monroe County, and it's Ken. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Okay, um, I'm a county resident here in Monroe. Hi, Ken. And we have a lot of non, uh, we have residents who live here that work in out of state, particularly a lot work in New York City, New mm -hmm. York State. We do not have reciprocal agreements with those states. So are they going to end up with a free ride with getting a homestead exemption, plus they won't have to pay an income tax? Can That's they get a question. credit now? That credit uh, kind of reduces, it gets reduced pretty, pretty much when, when you raise the rate, that, that credit is no longer mm -hmm. as much as it was. Mm -hmm. So they'll be paying more into it. And that's one of the reasons why uh, there might be a 1% sales tax we're looking at to offset it with something else. So their, their credit's going to get reduced. All right, here's a phone call from Northampton, and it's uh, Anthony. Go ahead. Anthony, are you there? I'm here. Go ahead. Hello? Anthony, ask your question. Try later, Anthony. Uh, how wide a range uh, in property taxes is there in Pennsylvania? In other words, how much equity is there in the system? Wow. Yeah. If, in, in, I can tell you in, in my area that, you know, you can, from anywhere from $1,000 on a home that might have been built... Uh, Gosh, in 1930 to uh, 25 and 30,000. Uh, but you could, you know, I can tell you that back in 86, if you built a home that cost you a couple of hundred thousand and your, ta your school taxes were a thousand, let's say back then, today they're about 10, 11,000. That's the type of growth that the county has had. And in all due respect, the school districts were getting the children and they had to educate those students and they had to build buildings. So when you build buildings, you know, today especially, um, a high school costs you $100 million. Uh, an elementary school at the time was about $30 million and, and, and a, a junior, uh, you know, mid, uh, mid, uh, the mid-level school, the, the, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh grade, that, that in between there, uh, cost you about $50 million. So those are costs that are incurred by in the growing school districts, and that's all part of the reason why taxes continue to grow. And I would also, I would also add to that that, you know, I live personally, I actually live within um, less than several hundred yards of three school districts. And so when I take the millage rates and I take the, uh, uh, the tax basis that some of those school districts have or do not have, I literally can have a relatively similar house that has a 5,000 square foot or even a 5,000, should I say, $5,000 school property tax. And it's fourteen thousand dollars less than a quarter of a mile away in a different school district. Okay, so again, um, and I have a colleague who has often argued with me about how his property taxes are not that high, and they pay maybe fifteen hundred or two thousand. But I think it's interesting. I believe his county went green. Mm. So, so whether or not you are really at a high escalated um, property tax, it's still an issue. And speaking of green, let's continue to consider that map that you showed us a while ago that's mostly green that showed the 54 percent of Pennsylvanians that voted in favor of this referendum. If you just think about it in terms of a percentage, 54 percent isn't exactly a landslide. It's just barely a majority. What's the message you got from a 54 percent yes vote? Well, you, you look at that, you have to take out of those numbers Philly and Pittsburgh because they're the two population bases. So when you take Philly and Pittsburgh out, it's about 64, 65 percent because all that all, you know, because of the population and the amount of votes that went out in those two cities. Mm -hmm. So it does skew the numbers. Mm -hmm. It does skew the numbers, but I actually have the chart in front of me that uh, this map and some of the figures that was produced by actually a son-in-law of mine before the sun was up the next morning by 4, 4.30 <laughs> or so after the election, and he thought this was just a, a uh, tremendous important numbers to gather. And so we have 48.2%. Um, we have a, a county, which was Clarion, that went down by 29 votes. 
Mm-hmm. OK, so the percentage wise, I think is interesting because even the lowest county, which was Philadelphia that Senator Scavella mentioned, was 39 percent. So, you know, in some respects, when we talk about elections, some of these numbers in the 50s are a landslide. And so it's very interesting when we talk about yeah. the numbers when it comes to something else about, oh, maybe it wasn't that big. But the numbers and the amount of people who came out. So I, I think something also is significant. Berks County had 3.1 percent um, times more folks that came out and voted for the constitutional amendment than maybe Monroe County. Hmm. And so that's significant, too, because maybe there wasn't as much drive or as much knowledge. The question in itself was very confusing to people. I got that many, many times about how how was this question developed. It was developed through the Department of State and the Attorney General's office. And so many people just left it blank. Hmm. Yeah, and, and Bruce, Legislature had yeah. no input into that question? No, that's, they tried. They but tried, let right. me tell you something. It's every every representative, every senator across the Commonwealth in their specific districts did whatever they wanted. Then some some felt they felt let the voters decide without their help or so. But, uh, you know, and just to clarify, my population in Monroe yeah. is much less, less than Berks right. County. And so that's, that's why like, I think all that yeah. plays into yeah. that mm-hmm. formula yeah. of the percentage mm. that you were talking about. Mm. So often that question was left blank because people just oh, didn't yeah. know what oh, to yeah. make of oh, it. Oh, yeah. You didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And because it was on the right column, so to speak, that's what they called it. They called it the right column, the confusing column. They said we just didn't vote over there. Mm. And in the location of the of the of ballot question on different machines, so, so could be on the bottom, could be at the top, depending on the the county that you're in. Uh, for example, in my district, in my two different counties, mm. it was in two different locations. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's something that, you, you know, I, have, I had to be aware of to, to, to let them know. Because in Monroe, it's at the top and in Northampton's right. lower. And I only know, knew it to be at the top right. Hmm. So I would even talk to people. Top right. Hmm. Uh, 1-877-PA-65001 is the number we'd like you to call to participate. 1-877-PA-65001. Now here's a call from Montgomery County, and it's Barbara. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I actually have a couple of comments. Um, my first one being is that whenever uh, we discussed about the revenue side and what the property tax brings in in terms of revenue, what we also seem to forget is the expense side. So perhaps if people are objecting to how much you know their property taxes because we have to keep raising revenue in order to meet expenses, if the state legislator were to look at ways of reducing expenses. And I know I attended a couple of those school funding commission meetings, and there was never any discussion about reducing expenses. Things like if we modified um, state testing requirements, because that costs the schools a lot of money. If we change the charter school laws, um, because that requires, that takes away a lot of money and doesn't necessarily provide benefits. If we reduce the number of school districts, do we really need 500 school districts? Or can there be some consolidation and efficiency of operation in that regard? So that's my first point. Um, my second point is if we're going to, if we end up continuing with property taxes, part of the problem with property taxes is that they are different areas have different assessed values. So if we change the way the property tax is calculated, that instead of doing it on something that's somewhat random based on market value, if we change that to the tax will be X number of dollars per square foot of land, square foot of building, okay, and that unit would that assessment would be standardized all across the state. That's a lot to think about, gentlemen. Let's go with her first point first, uh, which was about coming up with other ideas to economize. I agree with all her four points. I think that, that we should look at all four points, especially the, 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 the amount of school districts and, and maybe combined in Monroe, um, like for my county, and even in Northampton, have a central administration <laughs> and uh, have one person from each one of the, uh, of the uh, school districts mm-hmm. and, and let them operate that way. Uh, why do you need a curriculum person 
for each one of those school districts. The curriculum should be the same. Um, you know, a central location and send it, send the student to close to school. How often do we have a school bus pass three houses to go up the street to pick up some kids, some students, that they're going to be bringing to a school district that might be three or four miles farther away than the school that's closest for that, for mm -hmm. that young man, right on the same block. And I can tell you that it's happening throughout uh, my, my 40th Senate district and probably in, in yeah. some of your districts where, yeah. because of the way the road network is mm -hmm. compared to where the municipalities are. Yeah. Yeah, and there's consortiums that have been formed for people to, uh, school districts to save on fuel, to save on uh, the purchase of, uh, of things that I think we should, to Barbara's point, expand that. And it's a very good point, Barbara, because we have testing that is actually we spend millions of dollars out of state. I don't believe for a minute that we couldn't do that in Pennsylvania. And so from the business point of view, um, you bring up good points because that's the way I would look at it. I would look at it in, um, in terms of what do we get for our dollar and is this necessary? And the Department of Ed has to, has to understand some of that. The legislature has to understand that some things are not just black and white and cookie cutter. And there, it's, been, it's been floated out there for years that there should be three possible choices for designs of, of schools. And, and that has been shot down numerous times. But, you know, that is a point about if we're going to have tax dollars, public dollars being spent on public school buildings, why can't we keep them relatively the same? Uh, the caller second idea involved standardizing a calculation based on the size of the lot. I think that is much, much more difficult because what you're doing is you've got different, um, you know, the size of that lot in one area might be a completely different scenario than it is like in a Philadelphia or something yeah. else. To, to do that on a statewide would not be, would not be that easy. And, uh, I just, and I would add to that, Senator, that we, we have an agricultural county that I come from. Agriculture across the state is big. If you start going down that road, I'm not so sure that yeah. would have any support on so many different ways. We have agricultural easements, we have clean and green. There's so many yeah. different categories of how land is classified. All right, here's a call from Washington County and it's Tom. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Hi, Tom. I'm Tom. Can you hear me? Tom, yes. ask your question. We can hear you. What's that, man? Let's go to uh, Deb. Uh, Deb, are you there? All right, Deb, we're going to try you later. We're having trouble with some calls here. Uh, folks at home, remember to mute your TVs. Once we get you on the line, make sure you mute your TV, because otherwise it will be a real serious problem with our uh, audio. Uh, let's go back to Senate Bill 76, because after all, it has some history. And, and last year, uh, when it was voted on, uh, tell us in simple terms what it tried to accomplish and why it didn't pass. Well, uh, it, it tried to do what I believe um, was the right thing to do, is taking taxes off of all properties. And it raised the personal income tax to 495, and it took uh, the um, sales tax up 1%, but expanded the base tax to other items. I don't believe that the groups that were opposed to it thought that we would get as far as we did with it. Um, so when it was came that close, 24-24, with Lieutenant Governor breaking the tie, um, it really surprised them and got them all working. So over the last year, uh, they've been going after some of the senators that did vote for it and uh, showing their displeasure. And, and some of the senators are now not uh, favorable towards the bill because of the different points that have come out. Now, in my case, in my area, I have to support it and I'll always support it because it is hurting, hurting the citizens of Northampton and Monroe County. And they are, they are the exact numbers, Senator, exactly. Um, going, uh, taking a PIT from 3.07 to 4.95, and as you said, expanding not only the sales tax of the items now, but also bumping them to 7%. And so um, overwhelmingly, I do believe for so many different reasons that that is the more palatable um, way to go for the citizens um, of Pennsylvania that I have heard from. Um, I'm very, actually very disappointed in many ways that it, re that it develops. That every time you start talking about it, there's such a developed um, resistance to it. 
And so, um, and so that's what it would do to answer your question. Yeah. And, um, and as Mario said, there's, there is a created resistance to it. Yeah, we've, I voted for it in the House about three times. The last time I voted for it was the, the gosh, about four years ago when they said that it didn't balance. This is, you know, I don't know if you remember that discussion. Yeah, I, I stood up, I said, hey, you know, you know the numbers. This thing does work. Mm -hmm. Let's move it. And uh, right. they wanted no part of it. And right. so it went, I think we only had about 40 some odd votes, 40, 50 right. votes in the House of Representatives. Right. You need 102. That's a the long The last I remember was 59. 50, and, and, I, and that's yeah, one of the reasons I brought the numbers with me yeah. tonight, because they are current mm -hmm. IFO numbers. And, and these, this is the numbers that it would take to get these different proposals over the finish line. Was that, did you guys vote for it again after I left? Was there another vote on 76? Uh, you know what, I can't remember exactly yeah. from the time you left and, yeah, and, and when the vote three years was done. Right. And, but I, I, like I said, I, I just know that there has been attempts and mm -hmm. the closest we ever came with the 4% plan was about 87 votes. Yeah, well. Uh, let's give our guests a break just for a minute while we look at PCN's program schedule. Uh, legislative priorities for Pennsylvania's counties is the topic on On the Issues tonight with Douglas Hill. He's the executive director at the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania, and he's next at 8 o'clock. Uh, special funds used by the PA Environmental Protection Department and the Conservation and Natural Resources Department will be considered in a House Appropriations Committee hearing on Thursday. Watch that hearing live at 9 a.m. on PCN TV and stream it for free with PCN Select. Uh, we bring you the latest news from the Capitol with the reporters who write it on Journalists Roundtable. This week we're joined by guests from LNP, Community Newspaper Holdings Incorporated, and Politics PA. That's Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, Saturday on PCN is full of sports. Catch PCAC men's and women's basketball as Slippery Rock takes on California University live on Saturday afternoon. Uh, PCN's Match of the Week has two contests for you. Chambersburg takes on Central Dauphin, followed by the Lancaster and Lebanon League Team Championship. Go to PCNTV.com for the complete schedule. Uh, Want to get updates on our programming? Just connect with PCN on social media. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at PCNTV. Like, comment, and share our posts with your followers. And please find a moment to thank your local cable company for PCN. They carry our network on their channel lineup as a public service. No state or federal tax dollars are spent to operate PCN. Well, gentlemen, thank you for coming on our program Pleasure. about property taxes. And we're going to continue to take uh, phone calls from our viewers. And we're going to try uh, Deb in Hershey. Go ahead, please. Hi. Um I'm just wondering, this issue has been around for so many years. We've all seen it. It comes down to a matter of coming up with comparable funding for the money that the local school taxes generate. And I'm thinking, get rid of all the resistance, the extraneous issues. Think about a way to not expand the sales tax and just do a sales tax increase and dedicate that increase amount to the school, the school funding. That was one of the uh, options, a 1% increase in the uh, sales tax and, the, and the, uh, 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 an increase in the personal income tax to eliminate it on the, on the home, homestead. But on the other, you can't drive uh, on 76, you don't have enough money with just leaving it uh, as a 1% because right. if you're going to do total elimination, you've got to expand the base. Otherwise, you'll be about 12% in sales tax. Yeah, and I would say, Deb, uh, you, you sort of hit the nail on the head for, for another subject with respect to where this all started. And so if we go back in history and time a little bit, sales tax was started and created to pay for education. Exactly right. And so when you think about where that has gone and the amount of money that has been generated by that sales tax and not just going to the education is a significant point of what Barb said. So uh, I think Mario explained the fact that we have that conflicting issues with the plans. All right, here's a call from Montgomery County, and it's Tom. Go ahead. Hi, there. Thanks for taking my call. You there? We're here. Uh, I've, I'm a business guy from Washington County, and I served on the school board for about four years back in 2012. 
We have what you call county school. Most states have county schools. They don't got schools like we have here. That is a huge savings. Like the town of Washington I live in, there and a, and a half, fourth of a mile, there's three schools. That's absurd. We, we can reduce the cost tremendously here. We just don't want to address the issues and face the facts. Most of the people on the school boards, they don't understand business. When I was on the school board, there were three of us for business, guys. But the other bunch was retired teachers. Retired teachers should not be in those school boards because it's a conflict of interest, okay? The problem here can be addressed, but nobody wants to make the hard decisions. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. I'd have to say that you sort of hit the nail on the head when it comes to some of the decisions that have to be made. Um, when we think about, I believe there used to be just recently 501 school districts. I actually think it's 500 now. It's 500. And um, and so you have to have like there's 75 school districts across the state that cross county lines. And so we have a challenge with that alone. You have the CLR that, that brings up the common level ratio, which can be different mm -hmm. from one county to the next. And you have to have those school districts to vote to eliminate the one school district. I, I came in as a school director and there had been a a situation in Berks County where one specific school district that has a high um, millage rate and, and a very little tax base. And, and they've often trying to push themselves off on another school district to absorb them. Well, every time they look at their debt and every time they look at what this liability is, they run away. And so there's a lot of challenges with how do we consolidate, and I'd be all for it. There's many people that would be all for, we not only have 18 school districts in our county, but we have a BCIU that also supplements to those school districts, which could be incorporated into more work or at least take some of the load off. So there's a lot of opportunity. A lot of that has to come through from leadership. It has to come through from the Department of Ed. And those are some of the things that those departments need to really push. Here's a phone call from Hershey, and it's Bob. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Uh, amen to Tom from uh, Montgomery County. I really think uh, he made a good point. I don't think you're going to get ahead of this property tax issue until you address the cost of the schools. And I think the county-wide schools are a great idea. Why can't we do, like, a test program? Don't change it all overnight. Pick a county, start with one or two counties, build in an incentive program, and see if that works. I, I believe that I think Representative Brown is looking at something like that, and I, you know, I'm gonna, you know, it's it's worth to try. Let's let's make an attempt, and uh, I I believe that there would be a, a savings um, when you incorporate, uh, and if you do it in a county that's got a four like four school districts, Monroe would be perfect, mm -hmm. and that's where she she's in. I believe she has the bill. Um, there is a is a good start because you only have four school districts, right. with the exception of. East Strasbourg has a little piece up in Pike, and I guess they'll have to work that out somehow. But um, when you share that, when you when you do that, you're actually saving a lot in transportation too, because you're taking the students to the closest school. And the other thing is that when, and especially sometimes there's growth areas, and because of the growth areas, you got to build a building. But when you have the whole county, you can always move some students around to not to have to build that building because you might have a building elsewhere. So, and it's say, when you save money, the taxpayer is happy. Yeah. Put the money in the classroom with the teacher, not on, um, on busing, not on the superintendents, not on all that other stuff. Uh, one, <clears throat> one eight seven seven pa 6 5001 We'll be taking your calls on this subject for about the next 20 minutes. Now let's go to uh, Johnstown and hear from Jim. Go ahead, sir. Hi, I'm calling from over in Johnstown. Um, you know, we talk about the different you know expenses and how to fund schools. One of the one of the you know the things that really drives property taxes is the cost of the school itself. Now, over here we have a we had a good example of a school district that the directors told us that the school it can't function anymore. It can't be fixed up. We have to build a new school. Um, they spent $48 million to build a brand new high school, and the community college took over the old school and spent $8 million and has a, a just a beautiful campus. 
if we overspent even by twenty million dollars, we could have had the best teachers, the best right. science labs, you know, the best computer systems, and really educate our kids like they need to. It's an exaggeration, but you, you couldn't put a school in a pole building. But why does it need to look like a Taj Mahal that we have to pay for, you know, forever, which drives our property taxes crazy? I just had a school district paid a hundred million for a brand new high school. So, yeah. uh, you know, it, his might have been. They re renovated one and then they built an addition to it. Was a hundred million dollars? That's a lot of money. Yeah. That you know, to me, sometimes you could look within and make the necessary uh, yeah. remodel in, within that building and and not to spend that kind of money because that debt you're going to be paying for that debt for fifteen or so yeah. years, maybe twenty yeah. years sometimes, right. and right. and that's what. Drives up property taxes, well, the debt Jim, service, and I, and I would tell you, Jim, that that I not only agree with you, but I but I want to I want to share with you some of the challenge as to why uh, I often make a statement that everybody has a special interest and everybody has pretty much an opinion. We have local control that has been created through a jurisdiction, and so because you have school board members that are elected by a majority to make those decisions. They are not necessarily a decision that the state would make. And so it does create a little bit of a, an irritation when legislatively, I think the senator just mentioned, that a representative wants to, wants to put something out legislatively which would force the hand. And so many times, and as I mentioned earlier with leadership, you, you end up forcing the hand legislatively of a department or an administration because that's the voice of the people or the concern that you have. And so when we, when we look at the frustration of th those projects, we can have $100 million, as you mentioned. You can have 20 years of debt. And, and those things are decisions that are made that I've often said aren't rescindable. So because you can't rescind those decisions, it makes it very difficult to move forward because now you put debt out there that you must pay off. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take another phone call. This one is from Bethel Park, and uh, Doug is waiting. Go ahead, sir. Doug, are you Hello? there? Go ahead. Yes, I'm here. Are you, can you hear me? Go ahead. Okay, yeah, my question is this, or my statement. In Allegheny County... Uh, we have a 7% sales tax, a normal state sales tax of 6%, and we assess another 1%, and it goes specifically toward regional asset. It's a regional asset tax, and it helps fund the Carnegie Libraries, the Symphony, and other cultural assets. And the cultural assets receive funding based upon what's taken in, and they have to operate within that budget. And this could or maybe should be a model for the state, even if you put on a 2% or a 3% sales tax and this, the revenues increase every year and the school districts could get a per pupil portion of this percentage tax. And this is the money that you have. And, and you have to spend it, uh, you know, appropriately. I think it would solve several problems. It does work really well in Allegheny County. Yeah, here, here's your problem. Um, it depending on where you are in the state. For example, if you're in Delaware County and you border Delaware and Maryland or York and you, you, you border Maryland, uh, Delaware, Del state of Delaware has no sales tax. So all of those bordering counties to, to Delaware uh, are losing now, you ra and you're really going to push even more people out because they can avoid the sales tax by shopping in Delaware. Maryland is at 6%. So if you kick it up too high, then you're going to have people, it's going to be border bleed to Maryland. Uh, New Jersey just reduced theirs a little bit. They're about six and a half, I believe, or six, because mm -hmm. when they did their, uh, <coughs> their uh, gas tax, they reduced their sales tax a little bit. But watch, you'll be back at seven. So you, you, if you go too high, you're going to get hurt. New York State, because most of the state borders the upper part, uh, the New York State sales tax is about four and a half percent, and then they allow for a local tax. In New York City, it's like eight and a half, I believe, eight and a half. 
on the islands, eight and three quarters. So there, you you know, you're not going to get it. It's not going to affect this at all. That's a little farther out. But we most of we border the upper part where the sales tax isn't as high. So we've got to be very careful as well. Maryland, I mean, uh, Ohio is at six, and they allow up to two percent local. So on the borders into Ohio, it's about eight percent. So we're good there. Hmm. Now, some economic experts are saying that if we do, if the legislature does shift some of the tax burden over to sales tax, is that flow of revenue as reliable and steady as property tax has been in the past? No, uh, it's probably not. But remember one thing, when property taxes go up sky high and the, and the economy is bad, what happens is people lose their homes. They never take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. You know how many people lost their homes in this last recession? Uh, you yeah. open up the newspapers in, across the state and you'll see re, you know, tax sales. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't generate it. But on the other end, you got people losing their homes because of the, the escalating property taxes and they lost their job. Well, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of examples I think that could be used. And I would just, I'll just give you this example from the construction, um, really dynamic. So let's just say you wanted to put an addition on your house. And now you know that not only would you have to have an engineer and, and have permits and go through possibly heavy environmental permitting and whatnot, those are steps that you would have to go through just to get a shovel in the ground. So once you build that addition, now what happens is it triggers a new assessment. And so what happens is you, you're now your property tax goes up just because you made life possibly a little bit better on yourself. So in many times, in my case, folks would say, let's find a way that we can make a renovation with inside the house so that we don't have to go out because it won't affect our property tax. Don't expand. Yes. And so if you take that dynamic or if you take the fact that because people will spend money to do additions if there wasn't a property tax problem, now you raise that revenue that's coming in Crazy just tax. because of the economy, just because of the interest, just because, just like we see on a national level now going on, now as soon as you have more revenue and more interest coming into the economy, <clears throat> you now will stimulate more growth and more uh, taxation. Good answer. Very good answer. Uh, one eight seven seven P A six five thousand one is the number we'd like you to call. And uh, here's a call from mm -hmm. Gettysburg, and it's Mary. Go ahead. Yes. Hi. Hi. I uh, just wanted to bring up the point that in the Adams County area, there's six school districts, I think, in this county. And it's a large population of farmland, okay? Plus the fact of the Gettysburg National Military Park here in Adams County. You have these school districts that Gettysburg High School built their, what we call Taj Mahal, like the one gentleman said. And then all of the other schools in, this, in the Adams County area, all of a sudden we have to tear down buildings that are perfectly good condition. And we've got to match Gettysburg School District because they've got this mammoth big building up in here. So what I'm saying is with this property tax situation, and especially in a county, a rural county like Adams County is, the senior citizens are being forced to sell their properties because they continue to raise the school property taxes to make up for these mammoth buildings that they put up. Like, in other words, they build classrooms about around an open space. They didn't make use of that open space. So all I'm saying is that, you know, get back to the basics and get people who are business people on school boards and not former teachers or just because somebody moved into the area and they want to see their political name go up in the blackboard because in one school district we have a lady like that. And I'm just saying, you know, we need people on those school boards that know how to run. I couldn't agree with you more, Mary. I mean, this is why I brought up the fact that we have a local jurisdiction that elects these folks to serve you. And, and it can be very frustrating because I will tell you, out of nine folks that are elected in a rotation, five and four, it takes five as a majority to make those decisions. 
And it can be very frustrating. Many times I was one or two no votes against the rest. And once that decision is made, as was mentioned earlier, it cannot be rescinded. And I believe that's why it takes leadership. This is going to take, look, we're in a governor's race and or election cycle this year, among other election um, positions. And I think it's very, very important for the people of Pennsylvania to not only make their voice be heard, but to hold people accountable for what they may have said they were going to do and or to make it very well known as to what their priority is. I think the priority that was made as a, as a vote just this past election was pretty clear. And I think the folks that live in these counties that are not getting the representation or feel the pressure and need need to reach out. Mm -hmm. You know, just to talk about the senior citizen issue that she was talking about, you know, if, if, you're, if you're, retired, you're a senior, you're retired, and you're living in the same home 15 years after you retired, and you're in a growing school district, you're in trouble right now. You are yeah. literally in trouble, mm -hmm. and, and you're making tough decisions between food and medicine. My parents are in that very same boat. My parents live in a house since 1971. The amount of property tax that that has changed has put my parents in a place that if it wasn't for the five children that they have to help them, they would have been long out of their home. I think that is, well, I will bite my tongue because I believe as an American, and I think some, a gentleman earlier tonight was alluding to the fact of your, of your right to have a home, your castle, the place that you called home that, that you paid for, something that you even paid maybe interest for 20, 30 years on, and now you have it paid off, you are forced out of because that property tax has gone so high you can no longer afford it. Now, gentlemen, we only have about five minutes left in our program, and I want to make sure we get the governor's perspective out there on these legislative plans that we've talked about. It seems what they all have in common is shifting that property tax burden to another revenue source. Right. What's the governor got to say? Well, we, you know, I know that he was, he was in favorable towards the amendment initially, but now that it's passed, it goes back to uh, mm -hmm. what the representative Maloney's saying, it passed, it's green. So, you know, you're, you're elected by the people. I would assume that the governor has changed his mind once seeing that the map, has, uh, with the map and all the green on that map. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's take a phone call from Berks County, and it's Terry. Go ahead. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, I was going to ask about how we make up the difference between um, the loss of revenue from business property taxes that are no longer going to be taxed. But um, since you brought up the referendum and the law, I'd like to ask you, especially Mr. Maloney, because we're both from Berks County, how many school districts do you think in Berks County are going to go with the um, cutting the property tax 100% or cutting it 50% and switching to a sales tax? Thank you, and I'll wait to hear your answer. Well, Terry, thanks so much. And as you heard tonight, you know that this is the number one issue. But I will tell you, I, I'm not so sure your question is, is what we're discussing with respect to the school district. And so because we're talking about a homestead farmstead specifically tonight, that would be monies that would be developed in lieu of. And so the legislation that must follow must support that. No other way to put it but dollar for dollar. And so when you're looking at in lieu of, those monies would be there regardless for the homestead farmstead only. If we're talking about a legislative fix, then once we were to pass something that would be law, that would be something that would be a guideline, not only a guideline, but something that would be law that you would have to do. And so we can't have choices as far as picking and choosing without the money being replaced. And so I believe that's what would take place here. We have to have the money be replaced and or we're, there's no choice here because that money is in need, so it would have to be spent. I also think that he was talking specifically about one school district doing it, not the others. Right. And what we're talking about here, sir, is a statewide plan. Yeah. Uh, Petra from Lancaster County, you're on next. And be brief, please. Only a few minutes left. Petra, are you there? Yes. I just wanted to say that, you know, there's no true home ownership in Pennsylvania. 
because even when your home is paid for, I feel like I still owe rent to the schools. And if you can't pay, you still lose your home after all these years that you've paid in. And I can't even give my home to my kids without wondering about the school taxes in 20, 30 years. You know, it's just not yeah. right. Petra, we're, we're, <laughs> trying to ha- we're trying to handle that with what we're doing here, what we're proposing, because you are right. And it needs to be corrected. And I would just say this very shortly. I was sitting in my office one day and I had, I had a visit from an elderly woman who sat down in front of me, opened her purse and pulled out her property tax bill. And she said, sir, I can no longer pay this. How can you help me? It's very, very disheartening to know that that woman has very little choice left because she's going to be forced out of her home. And it wasn't easy for her to come to you. It was not easy. That is correct. So each of you gentlemen, take about 30 seconds to tell me what is going to happen next. Well, we're um, in, in, the, in the Senate, we represent Senator Argyle, myself, and a couple of the other senators. What we're doing is we're basically reaching out to the senators that have an interest in, in moving a property tax bill and what their preference is. And we, and we, we talked about three in, in the Senate. And whichever one that we have the 26 votes for will be the one that we're going to move. And I'm, my assumption is that you're probably going to do the same thing. Yeah, and I believe, I believe that's the process that will take place. Um, we'll certainly caucus a lot, but I will tell you that in the conversation today with other, with other uh, colleagues of mine, these numbers are new, and these are the numbers that we will move forward with as what our options are. Well, gentlemen, we're out of time. Thanks to our guests, Representative David Maloney, Republican from Berks County, and Senator Mario Scavello, Republican from Monroe County. Uh, Legislative priorities for Pennsylvania's counties is the topic of On the Issues tonight with Douglas Hill. He's the executive director at the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania, and he's next at 8 o'clock. If you didn't get a chance to call in and comment during tonight's show, post your question or comment on our Facebook page or go ahead and tweet us. I'm Larry Casper. Thanks for watching.